We are on our way to Canelli to Copa Winery for a new exciting project. As you know, we're going to be sharing some of our life with you during our vlog. It smells so good. I have 30 degrees Celsius. They smell. <laughs> Hopefully, we have one left in the car. That's water. And today is actually the first video where we actually take you to a winery and uh, it's going to be a whole day of filming and Kopp is actually making a video for the winery at the same time so it's going to be a little hectic. Um, they have a beautiful winery, it's part of the UNESCO World Heritage. The family has been there for the last I think it's more than a hundred years. Yeah. We can wait to show you. All right, we are at Casanova Calcea with Luigi Coppo over there. And we're here to talk about the farming approach of the winery. Uh, the idea, of course, uh, it's trying to be as much respectful for the earth. So mm -hmm. believing or not, everybody's living here. So we have a sort of uh, responsibility in order to preserve the area. Uh, and that's the reason why we're trying to be as sustainable as possible. What does sustainable mean for you? So, if you're thinking about agriculture, generally speaking, and of course uh, viniculture and viticulture as well, um, try, to, try to imagine that as a circle. Mm -hmm. So, right now it's harvest time, which is our goal. So, the, the idea is always trying to produce the best grape ever in mm -hmm. order to have a good wine, of course. And by the way, these grapes are amazing. And those are, are outstanding. This year, I mean, we're very happy so far. This Barbera, it's, it's perfect. Ready to be. Uh, Can I try it? Uh, Peace. Go ahead. Yeah. And you know, Barbera has always this bright and fresh acidity, mm. but mm. also you can tell, you can Sweet. tell, you can tell that now it's ready because yeah. it's, you got some sweetness. Right now we are asking a lot, okay, to the vineyard. We have, we have mm -hmm. asked a lot to the plant. So uh, by the time we harvest, it's not only the end of our journey, but it's uh, also again the start. Because our uh, our goal is try to uh, preserve this area, preserve the whole territory year after year, more and more. It's time. Right after the harvest, for instance, uh, we need to start to give back to the soil, mm. to the plant, what we ask for. After 15, 20 days, then we start to plant those kind of seeds that will be our natural compost in the spring. Mm -hmm. We plant uh, seeds like wild mustard, legumes, clover. And right after that, uh, by the time that the temperature uh, rises a little bit and we start to have the blooming, we will cut all those plants off and we leave them on the soil as a natural compost. We need to feed the soil, oh, so that's, that's why yeah. we avoid any kind of chemical in this way. We, we tie some laces here and there in order to confuse um, all those insects. For instance, Lepidoptera, which is one of the most common. And, um, and because of that, we can avoid chemical. We're living here, my dad lives here, my mom lives here. Hopefully one day my son will live here. And yeah. I, hopefully they will grow up here. And, uh, and to me, it's very important that we can keep this environment uh, as, as, as healthy as possible. I have a question for you. Yep. <laughs> I wanted to know what do you think about climate change and how does this affect, affect the, the wines? Well, let's start saying that first of all, climate change is a thing, yes. which is uh, we should not, you know, uh, sure. our days uh, 
do not take it for granted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, it is a thing. So it is. We don't want to get political. Uh, we're, we're not I got, going I got there. your we're reference. Not going there, I promise. But yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It is a thing. You know, it is a thing. Yeah. We can clearly see that everybody that um, is related uh, with uh, uh, agriculture uh, can tell you that. Mm -hmm. What we realized over the years that um, the the time for picking the grape is much earlier than it used to be. So we're now here in uh, one of our oldest uh, uh, vineyards and I clearly remember my uncle Roberto who's in charge of the winemaking. Mm -hmm. When I was a little kid, um, usually the harvest um, was over around uh, the first half of October. Wow. We're, we're uh, in the second half of September and we are almost done. So like 2017 I remember we started our harvest for Pinot Noir because we also make it sparkling wine so that's usually our green light mm -hmm. um, it was August the 1st I believe that what's very important it's also the facing of the vineyard back in the days mm -hmm. having the south facing it was yeah. the the real deal yeah. it was the best it was the best yeah now, especially for Nebbiolo especially for Nebbiolo also for Barbera which loves uh, sun, which love heats, mm -hmm. uh, in order to get the, the good ripeness. Right now, I would say that probably in the next future we will reconsider other positions mm -hmm. and different altitudes. I mean, we cannot do something with altitudes here because we are around uh, 265 mm -hmm. meters more or less above the sea level. We cannot move, of course, those uh, vineyards uh, somewhere else, but what we can manage is try to react as fast mm -hmm. as possible. And one more thing um, that is not taken for granted, I would say, is that everything in this area is done by hand. Yes, it is. And uh, talking about COP, it's 100%. And the reason why, it's because, of course, we're selecting already uh, the best grapes. As you can see, the row here. They're are, very tight. They're tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're old. And so they weren't built for machine. That's the reason why. And also they're very steep. You can see how steep we're, we're uh, yeah. right here yeah. now. And uh, That's a good we're workout. almost falling down. It's a good workout. <laughs> we burn calories. Oh, this yeah. time of the year we burn a lot of calories. We should do that instead of crossfit. We should do that, yes, of course. <laughs> Less injuries. I think we should uh, symbolically participate to the 2020 harvest. Please. By picking yeah. one. Chiara, Chiara will. Chiara. I've never done Chiara. that, so... Should I? Mi devi insegnare come come prendere l'uva. Okay. Yeah, just, She's teaching me. Eh? I don't know how to do ah. it. Pick a good one. Nice yeah. Okay. Taglia quello. This is the cappato. Do it, do it. Tipo questo? Sì, è benissimo. Questo è bellissimo. Ah! ah. 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 Right. She's hired. Done. She's tired already. She's saying that from <laughs> tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Eight, eight, six o'clock. Ah, seven. Seven. Not seven because it's Saturday. I Good. might be late. Is that okay? <laughs> no. Grazie mille. Grazie a voi. Grazie. Grazie. Thank you. So maybe tell us a little bit about. The history of the winery and why you're here? So, well, the, our history goes back to the end of the 19th century. Um, the winery was founded by my great-grandfather, Piero, in 1892. And uh, we're in Canelli and the winery was always located here in Canelli. But my great-grandfather was not from Canelli. He was uh, originally from Ocimiano, which is a small village close to Casale Monferrato. Okay. And he came here because Canelli already was known as to be one of the most important places in terms of wine and grapes and, uh, and uh, as a market. And he started his activity, his, uh, his journey in the wine industry as a uh, negociant. Oh. So buying grape, buying wine, selecting the best uh, grapes, selecting the best wines. And, and then, while uh, he came here, he met my great-grandmother Clelia, which from her side already owned a winery. That's when happened for the first time a sort of joint venture, probably back then it was not uh, so-called. 
and, uh, and our uh, adventure as Coppo started here in Canelli officially. So I do now represent the four generations, um, after Piero, which was the founder, Luigi, the third generation that took over uh, my dad, Paolo, and my three uncles, uh, Piero, uh, Gianni, and Roberto, and now me. Okay. Um, we're known to be as Barbero specialists, that's our most representative variety, and uh, it's also uh, the wine that absorbs the majority of our production. How did the UNESCO change the you know, shape of the winery and the market, and how do you think this area and this winery will evolve in the future? So this is a great question because uh, almost by coincidence, by the time I started working here, the UNESCO uh, recognizement came. So it was 2014 and it was June and I remember uh, having a big party here because of the UNESCO and even if we didn't know exactly what would be happen next, mm -hmm. we were extremely excited. Uh, but even before the UNESCO, uh, our winery already started, you know, the idea of being open, being accessible. I believe that now Coppo is playing a big role in the hospitality here in Montferrat. We're, open. We're always open, we're always very happy to have people here. So, in the next future, I believe, I feel like there's a new wind coming. There's a big new energy because of the new generations. It's really happening. I'm seeing that year after year, this area is growing and also the, the target of people, the, 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 the number of people that are extremely interested in wine and food is, is, is coming here. So we're, I, I'm definitely seeing a shift from, you know, from already extremely famous area. In terms as, of generations. In terms of generation, okay. in terms of people coming here, people mm -hmm. looking forward to have a bigger knowledge, for instance, on Barbera. You know, there's a, there's a new designation, which is the Nizza, which is, a, which is big now, which is very mm -hmm. important for us. We're about to release two new wine, two new brews mm -hmm. on that. And, and, I, I, and I feel people, uh, I feel there's people passionate about it. Please. Madam. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay, so we're here in this beautiful room. I see a lot of bottles. I see a lot of berries. What's happening here? So that's where actually we're, we age our wines and uh, we refine our wine in the bottle mm -hmm. as well. As I said, the third generation really uh, made a sort of revolution in terms of style, uh, specifically in Barbera. You know, uh, I, 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 I repeated this over and over today, but again, uh, Barbera is on our DNA, so... Mm -hmm. uh, and we've always been making Barbera. I believe like that my dad and my uncles, they were able to uh, elevate that this kind of variety, which is super popular here in, uh, in Italy, in Piemonte, is, you know, is our everyday wine, but they want to bring Barbera up to the next level. They really want to do that. And so they said, okay, let's... You know, Monferrato, it's, it's known because of Barbera, and mm -hmm. the best sites are dedicated to Barbera, so it was very natural to focus on this kind of variety. And they said, okay, we have all these beautiful places, we have these beautiful vineyards, let's try to make the best out of that. And so, uh, in, in the beginning of the 80s, they said, okay, what we have? We have Barbera. Barbera is super bright in acidity, very low in tannins, and so the idea was, okay, let's try to combine those two things together. Let's try to experiment with some uh, barrels. Mm. We're now using only like French oak and this is our style. I mean this is, uh, first of all we want to show the variety. We do, we do not want to release over oak wine of course. Mm -hmm. We want to show yeah. the variety in the first place. We want to keep the identity of the variety and the area, the territory and over the year I think we, we were able to find a consistency in terms of in terms Definitely. of in terms of quality and also in terms of style, which I really like. You know, uh, style is always uh, uh, super uh, personal, uh, and uh, I believe uh, our wine reflects the area, but also reflects our style, the way mm -hmm. we think about wine. And I think that's absolutely something you have accomplished. Working as a sommelier, I knew that whenever I was pouring a bottle of Coppo, I was going to deliver quality. So Thank you. the consistency throughout the vintages and throughout the actual grapes and styles of wines you have, it's, you know, Coppo now is a great brand. Thank you. So you definitely have accomplished a lot in the, in the last 120 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully for the next 120 years, we have, we have something to do. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Yesterday we had a great time. Definitely. Thank you for watching. Um, come visit Popo next time you're in Piemonte. Subscribe to our channel and we'll catch you in the next one. Ciao Luigi, thank you. Ciao, 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 ciao ragazzi. Hi, I'm Luigi Coppo and today we are hosting One on the Hill here in our cell. So Pierre and Chiara are a very good friend of mine and uh, uh, they had a great idea. Um, they're opening a new channel on YouTube and uh, I'm uh, very proud to be the number one episode and um, uh, if you like this channel, please support.